Welcome to uh, John Bradbury's Metal Detecting Adventures and uh, here we are with another adventure and this one is about Tudor or not and so we'll start off with the story, this is a land detecting story so we're off in my favourite places in North Yorkshire to detect I was at maybe with my brother and friends and uh, we'd spent the morning detecting on couple of these fields and one particular field close to the uh, uh, road. So beautiful day, slight stubble, finding a few bits and bats, a bit of uh, copper nails and bits of foil and the odd coinage and things like that. Done this field many many times and uh, it's just beautiful to be away from work and just chill out on a Sunday a lovely day and uh, just enjoying ourselves. I, I think I wasn't really bothered at that time finding anything. Keep your mind occupied because you don't know what you're going to get because when you get that signal, beep beep, you just don't know what it is. And more often than not, you know, most of the signals are rubbish, you know. Bits of iron and bits of tin and bits of lead and all sorts of things that you, you really don't want to find. But you're keeping your mind occupied and you just never know when something else turns up and you think, ah, that, that, that could be interesting. Anyway, I'm detecting, I'm deciding to do a, uh, a sweep of uh, edge of this field. I think about two foot away from edge. I'm thinking, yeah, well, I've got that. The signals per usual, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder what this is. It sounded pretty good on my machine. Dug it up and... Uh, Pull a clump of muck out and brush it aside and got my probe and fished out something glint of gold there. Well, sometimes when it's a glint of gold, you know, flipping golden ring pull so you don't get too excited. And I brushed it away and I thought, oh no, it's a ring. Oh my god, it's a ring! It's, it's a gold ring! I can't believe I got a gold ring! Oh, and, Oh, wedding band, wedding band. Oh, not hallmarked. No, if it's not hallmarked, it's it's a very old gold ring. It could be medieval, could be Roman, could be anything. Oh my, I'm bloody going to tent to bloody dozen here. I'm thinking, wow. Oh, rubbed it out and in centre, inscribed inside. Oh, love till we die. <gasps> I can't believe it. I found a. Gold ring with script inside in a Tudor script. I'm thinking Tudor, come a Tudor, come a Tudor. Oh, I was ecstatic. I was, I just felt like as if I won the lottery. In fact, that's what it feels like for us detectorists when we find things like that, you know. Oh, I could get over. Well, straight to my Ford. I told my brother to get, get yourself down here. Look what I found. Come here, come rush him down with his machine. What have you found? What have you found? I think it's a, I think it's a Tudor ring. I think it's a Tudor ring. Oh, we're all made up. Oh, fantastic. I mean, you don't get many there in the bucket. I've got to be honest with you. You don't. Excitement. I think I had to calm. It took me about a couple of hours to calm down. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Oh, oh, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, um. Still in detecting, what you have to do, you have to put it in your pocket and carry on. You don't know what else you're going to find. But still, you're on a high, you're on a high. You don't give a toss what you find. You can find tin cans, you're not bothered. You know? And it just happened to be tin cans, bottle tops, and all sorts of rubbish in leads and all sorts. And they're fine, much maybe the odd coin. But I was static. I couldn't. Oh, they're brilliant, you know. So, back home. Went back, cleaned it all up, and there it is. Yeah, yeah. Love you until I die. I thought, oh, wow. Oh, it's just immense to find something like that. And it was something like that, uh, if it's more than 300 years old, one has to declare it to the fines uh, officer, and then they have to then register it to be treasure trove or whatever they decide they want to do with it. So it's a government thing, down to London Museum, and they decide whether they keep it and pay you the value, or they give it you back. Anyway, it just so happened that uh, uh, they had two and a half years, 
And I ring saying, what's going on? You know, what's going on? Two and a half years he had it. Got it back. And it was a 17, according to what they said, I think it's it was Tudor. But they wouldn't, so there's no evidence for it to be Tudor. But we do know it's uh, earlier than 1733. Earlier, it's got to be Tudor, isn't it? So, 1733. Well, off it went, did that ring, I'm afraid. And to auction, 550 quid. And uh, the law of the land, you have to share the 50-50 split with the farmer. So when I got paid, get your taxes off, and then you send a cheque to the farmer. Of course, the farmer rang me up and he's pretty chuffed. He says, oh, brilliant, that. thanks for that. And just in time for Christmas, a present probably for his, for his daughter or something like that. But yeah, it was nice to find, exciting to find, and... Um, Really now looking back, I should have kept it because for the sake of a couple of hundred quid, it, I think I could have managed. I could have managed. I thought we were talking thousands, but no, it, it, it's not thousands. That's the disappointment, I'm afraid, of some artifacts. The history is there, you think the value is there, and it's not. So certain things, depending on, uh, on its rarity, and it wasn't rare. Now that particular ring was called a posy ring. That's what they call posy rings, with inscriptions inside as a posy ring, gold one, you know. But I tell you what, I bet I'll never find one of them again. So, lesson there, if you can afford it, keep it. Well, thanks for joining me on that story. Um, join me again, and I uh, hope you find uh, uh, that in this one interesting. Uh, take care, until the next time. Bye for now.